President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. is set to speak with President Biden today. They're meeting at the White House, and it comes as the U.S. looks to navigate tensions with China in the region. The visit comes after a busy weekend for President Biden, who was the guest of honor at the White House Correspondents' Center. Journalists, celebrities, and politicians gathered in Washington for the event. It is intended to be fun, but also serious, uh, focused on freedom and freedom of the press, of course, and defending democracy. Nancy Cordes was there and has more from Washington. I believe in the First Amendment, not just because my good friend Jimmy Madison wrote it. <laughs> With hundreds of journalists looking on, President Biden poked fun at one of his re-election weak spots, his age. You say I'm ancient. I say I'm wise. You say I'm over the hill. Don Lemon would say, that's a man who's prime. The White House Correspondents' Dinner, sometimes known as Nerd Prom, brings together reporters, politicians, and a sprinkling of celebrities for a night of roasting themselves and each other. Comedian Roy Wood Jr. Real quick, Mr. President, I think you left some of your classified documents up here. You can get the book. Yeah. Yeah, no, don't give them to him. I'll put them in a safe place. He don't know where to keep them. I'm a... Both Wood and Mr. Biden took jabs at Fox News and its $787 million defamation settlement with Dominion Voting Systems. Three people you don't want to see in the courtroom. That's Dominion, Cardi B, or Gwyneth Paltrow. You're going to lose. I'd call Fox honest, fair, and truthful. But then I could be sued for defamation. One of the night's biggest draws was basketball star Brittany Griner, who was released in December from Russia after 10 months of detention. She and her wife, Sherelle, were guests of CBS News. Brittany, where are you, kid? Stand up. Come on. President Biden met privately with Griner before the dinner. She described the moment to Gail King. What did he say? to see me, and um, he kept saying how big of a fan he was of mine and how much he loved the way I play basketball. Uh, I thought it was pretty cool. Greiner was joined at Saturday's dinner by the families of journalists Evan Gershkovich, wrongly detained in Russia since March, and Austin Tice, held in Syria for nearly 11 years. Our message is this. Journalism is not a crime. They are not forgotten. And I promise you, I am working like hell to get them home. Now, this dinner is meant to raise money for aspiring journalists around the country. This weekend, the dinner went to fund $130,000 worth of scholarships for 31 students. Anne-Marie? Uh, all right, so, uh, oh, look at that. Wait a minute, is that, a, is that look, at, look at all these good-looking people. Um, that that would be the CBS News White House unit. Uh, so rare to have us all together in yeah. one place at the same time and in our Saturday best like that. <laughs> so true. Uh, and it was uh, and you were looking pretty fabulous yourself, Anne Marie. <laughs> it's great Thank to you. see you in person instead of through the screen. I know. This the thing about it is I talk to you guys every single day, um, and I yeah, I feel like I know you, you know, quite well. But then once I saw so many people in real life, I realized how rare it is for us to sort right. of be there face to face in the flesh. But I want to get to that. But first. The business okay. at hand. Today, uh, we're going to see a, a visit by uh, the, the president of the Philippines. Uh, it's his first time since being elected coming to the U.S. Um, what will be kind of the focus of this trip? You know, first, let me ask you, what's yep. the dynamic between the two leaders? Because as we know, the previous president um, did not have the best relationship with, with the U.S., Right. I mean, there is so much history here. It actually goes back decades because in the 1980s, uh, the then Senator Joe Biden was very critical of then President Ronald Reagan's relationship with Ferdinand Marcos Jr.'s father, mm. who was then the leader of the Philippines, Ferdinand Marcos, who was a, a notorious dictator, ended up being accused of uh, human rights abuses, had to flee the country, lived in exile in Hawaii for many years. Um, but back then, Biden was very critical of the relationship. He said that uh, Ronald Reagan only wanted to be friends with him because it was uh, strategically important for the U.S. Uh, to, ha to have military bases in the Philippines. Well, guess what? Uh, decades later, 
The reason that Ferdinand Marcos Jr. is coming to the White House is because the Biden administration is very interested in keeping and maintaining and uh, perhaps expanding military bases in the Philippines, which is strategically located very close, parts of it to Taiwan. Um, and this is something that, that both the Biden administration and uh, the, the Philippines are very keen on, on doing because the Philippines uh, leaders are watching what China has been doing, watching China's threats uh, against Taiwan and, and very concerned about what this means for them. So this is all about geopolitics and, um, and making sure that the U.S. sends a message to China, just as it did when the leader of South Korea was here last week, that the U.S. is um, expanding, strengthening these alliances in the Pacific and that it's going to continue to do so. All right. So let's get back down to the White House Correspondents' Dinner. Yes, Joe Biden was hilarious. It was, it was you know, the, everyone was great. But, you know, you know what they say, there's always a little bit of truth in every joke. Right. He joked about himself. Um, can, can we talk a little bit about the message perhaps he was trying to send when he was up there? Yes, I mean, you know, when you have a, a forum like this where you can poke fun at yourself, you can try to neutralize some of your problem areas. So obviously for this president, it's his age, he's 80 years old, um, and, and polls have shown that that's something that is of concern to voters as he announces his bid for re-election. So he had a lot of jokes about that. He snuck in uh, a, a point jokingly about the fact that Donald Trump is almost as old as he is, but nobody talks about that. Uh, another big issue for him uh, is his low approval ratings. And so he made a joke about that, too, talking about how, uh, hey, my approval ratings are stuck at 42 percent. But guess what? I got a call from House Speaker Kevin McCarthy asking me, what's your secret? <laughs> Basically uh, making a point that a, a lot of congressional leaders have approval ratings that are lower than his are. Um, you know, and, and beyond the, the fancy parties and the fancy dresses and all of that, uh, what this weekend and this dinner uh, is really about is about shining a light on the First Amendment and the fact that here in Washington and in the U.S., we can ask tough questions of our leaders. Hey, we can even joke about them, poke fun at them in public, which is something that you simply wouldn't be able to do uh, in so many places around the world, and we don't take that for granted. Yeah, so true. Um, yeah, it was a great night. He's got incredibly good uh, comedic timing for a president. Yeah. Uh, Nancy, thank you very yeah, much. It's a good night. <laughs> you got it.